In northwestern Costa Rica, something unbelievable happened back in the late 1990s. A local orange juice company dumped thousands of truckloads of orange peels onto a sunburnt, lifeless piece of land inside a national park. At first, it looked like environmental vandalism, pollution in its purest form. People were furious. There were complaints, lawsuits, and plenty of angry voices calling it a disgrace. Within a year, the project was shut down and everyone moved on. But 16 years later, when scientists returned to that same site, what they found left them speechless. The barren, cracked ground had turned into a dense green forest. The air was cooler, birds were everywhere, and life was bursting out of what once looked like a dump. What started as a controversial waste disposal turned into one of the most unexpected ecological miracles ever recorded. How did that happen? Before the oranges came into the picture, the land was dying. The site was part of the Area de Conservación Guanacaste, a vast national park known for its biodiversity. But not every part of it was thriving. Many years earlier, parts of the park had been converted into cattle pastures. The result was devastating. Overgrazing stripped the soil of nutrients, the grass turned brittle, and the trees vanished. The once vibrant ecosystem became a desert of dry, compacted soil where nothing could grow. Restoring such land would have required huge amounts of money and time, neither of which were easily available. That's when two visionary ecologists, Daniel Janssen and Winnie Halwax, came up with an unconventional idea. They had spent years working to restore Costa Rica's ecosystems and knew that the best solutions were often the simplest. Around the same time, a new orange juice company called Del Oro had set up shop nearby. As part of their operations, they produced tons of waste every day, mountains of peels, pulp, and leftover fruit that had nowhere to go. Janssen and Halwax proposed something wild. Why not dump all that orange waste on the barren pasture and let nature handle the rest? In 1996, a deal was struck. Del Oro would dump its orange waste over three hectares of degraded land inside the park. In return, the company would save on landfill costs, while the park would get an organic boost for its dead soil. It was a win-win idea. Or so it seemed. Soon after the agreement, truck after truck began unloading massive piles of orange peels. Over a single year, 12,000 metric tons of fruit waste covered the ground the equivalent of about 2,000 elephants worth of oranges. The peels were spread unevenly, forming bright orange mounds that quickly began to rot under the Costa Rican sun. The air was thick with the smell of fermenting citrus, flies swarmed and the ground turned sticky with pulp. To an outsider, it looked like a disaster, and many people saw it that way. Locals complained about the stench and insects. Farmers nearby were worried about water contamination, News spread quickly, and soon environmental agencies were getting involved. But the harshest criticism came from Del Oro's main competitor, another juice company called Tico Fruit. They accused Del Oro of polluting a protected area and using conservation as a cover to dump industrial waste for free. The backlash was fierce. Within a year, the case went to court and the judge ruled in favor of Tico Fruit. The project was declared illegal and the dumping had to stop immediately. By 1998, the entire experiment was over. The site was left untouched. No more trucks came. The orange mounds sat there, slowly decomposing in the tropical heat. People forgot about it, including the scientists who started it all. The project was seen as a failure, an embarrassing, messy stunt that was better left in the past. But nature was quietly working behind the scenes. Over the next 16 years, something extraordinary unfolded. The thick layer of decomposing peels smothered the invasive grasses that once choked the land. Beneath the surface, nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus seeped into the soil. Microbes and fungi flourished, breaking down the fruit into rich organic matter. The ecosystem began to heal itself. Fast forward to 2013. A Princeton University student named Timothy Troyer stumbled upon an old paper written by Janssen and Halwax that briefly mentioned the orange peel experiment. Out of curiosity, he decided to find the site and see what became of it. With the help of the original ecologists, he set off to locate the forgotten patch of land. It turned out to be nearly impossible to find. 
the landmarks had vanished. The once barren ground was now completely covered by forest. It took time, but when they finally identified the area, what they saw was astonishing. Where there had once been dusty pasture, there now stood a thick green jungle. Trees towered above, vines curled around trunks, and birds called from the canopy. The transformation was so complete that it was hard to believe it was ever a wasteland. To understand the magnitude of the change, Troyer and his team set up a formal study comparing the orange-treated plot to a nearby control area. The results were staggering. The orange site had nearly three times more plant biomass. Tree density had skyrocketed and species diversity was significantly higher. The soil itself was alive again, packed with nutrients and microbial activity. In 2017, Troyer's findings were published in Restoration Ecology. According to the study, the site had 176% more above-ground biomass than the untreated area, achieved without any human maintenance, irrigation, or fertilizers. The experiment had accidentally created a thriving ecosystem at almost no cost. The secret? The orange peels had acted as a natural barrier against invasive grasses while enriching the soil with organic matter. They gave native plants the breathing room they needed to return. Seeds, likely carried by birds or buried long ago, sprouted into saplings. Within years, the desolate ground turned into fertile forest. It was a vivid reminder that sometimes the most effective environmental restoration doesn't come from billion-dollar projects, but from letting nature take the lead, with just a little push in the right direction. But the story also raises an uncomfortable question. If this works so well, why aren't we doing it everywhere? The truth is, it's not that simple. Not all organic waste is beneficial. Some types can alter soil chemistry or release harmful acids that kill microorganisms instead of helping them. It takes the right kind of waste, the right climate, and the right soil conditions for something like this to succeed. Costa Rica got lucky, or perhaps nature just knew what to do. Still, the implications are massive. Around the world, millions of tons of organic waste are discarded every year left to rot, burned, or dumped into landfills. What if, instead of treating it as trash, we used it to heal the planet? The Orange Peel Project shows that waste doesn't have to mean destruction. It can mean rebirth. And Costa Rica's story didn't end there. In 2021, researchers tried a similar experiment using discarded coffee pulp on another degraded pasture. In just two years, Tree cover in the treated area shot up to 80% compared to only 20% in the control plot. The soil became richer, invasive grasses disappeared, and new saplings grew up to 15 feet tall. These results hint at a future where farm waste becomes a weapon for ecological restoration, a simple, low-cost method to bring life back to the planet. Yet, despite its beauty, the original orange peel story still divides people. Back when it started, many saw it as reckless pollution. Even now, some argue that the lack of strict scientific control makes it less reliable as an official model. It was never replicated at a large scale, so we can't be sure it would work everywhere. But maybe that's what makes it so powerful. It wasn't planned, it wasn't polished, and it wasn't perfect. It was messy, smelly, and controversial. And it worked. It reminds us that nature doesn't need perfection. It just needs a chance. Even when humans make mistakes, the earth can sometimes turn those mistakes into miracles. The Costa Rican forest born from discarded orange peels stands as living proof that healing is possible, not through control, but through cooperation with nature's own processes. The land didn't need heavy machinery or artificial fertilizers. It just needed time, patience, and a mountain of what everyone else thought was garbage. Now imagine scaling that up. Imagine if cities across the world started using organic waste not just for composting but for reforestation. If coffee pulp, fruit peels, and crop leftovers could help restore entire ecosystems, the planet might just stand a chance against deforestation and climate change. It's a story that forces us to question our definition of waste. If a pile of rotting oranges can spark a rainforest, what other miracles are hiding in the things we throw away? In the end, that forgotten Costa Rican dump became a symbol of hope, proof that even when humanity gives up on something, nature doesn't. It's patient, 
resilient, and always ready to reclaim what's hers. The only thing she needs is a small chance to begin again. So next time you peel an orange, remember, somewhere in Costa Rica, a forest is growing because someone once decided that trash could be treasure. That's it for today, folks. See you in the next video.